On today's Crimson Technology, we'll be looking at the second installment of Amazon Return Maker Electronics. This time, we're looking at laser engravers and whether you can get a deal or just get ripped off. I ordered two of these Focus FE20 laser engravers from Focus, listed as returned items with no refunds or returns. I paid $58 a piece for a two-pack of these laser engravers. This is not sponsored, and I did pay for these with my own money. Now the first one I ordered came in the original box, and upon opening it, I found that it's actually brand new, never even removed from the box before it was returned. Everything is still sealed in the original anti-static bag, and I'll be keeping it that way for now. The second box I opened is an entirely different story, however. Taking a close look at the laser module, it's quite dirty, so I'm thinking this was used for quite a while before it was returned. Also, there are a lot of broken pieces on this one, and I'm pretty sure it's missing parts. This is one of the pieces that ride along the Y-axis and holds the gantry in place. It's been broken into at least three pieces, so I decide to remove the broken piece that's still attached to the gantry so I can scan it and recreate the part. Then I remove all of the wheels from the other half of the part so that it will be flat against my scanner bed. Then I put a ruler on the bed of the scanner so I can calibrate the size of the image later, and line up the three broken pieces in the center of the bed. Always use the center of the bed, as the image gets more distorted at the edges. Now I scan that into my computer and open it up in Fusion 360. I calibrate the image to the size of the ruler, clicking on 0 and 5 centimeters, and setting that scale to 50 millimeters between those two points. Then I use the line tool to trace out the edges of the piece, stopping short of all the corners for now. Then I go in with the three-point arc tool and make rounded corners just like the original piece had. Then I move on to the circle tool and taking real-world measurements with a caliper, I find the sizes of each hole and relay that to the model. Then I extrude the sketch out to 5 millimeters thick, which is the same as the original piece. Now I can print that. After printing, we're left with a full copy of the original piece. All we need to do is add all of the pieces back to the part and attach it back to the gantry. Now I move on to the mount for the laser module, which was also broken, and load that into Fusion 360 to do all of the same tracing and measuring that I did with the last part. Then I extrude that to 5 millimeters, save, and print. Now I can mount that back onto the laser module, and off camera I also redesigned the broken piece of acrylic at the top of the laser. Then I could reattach everything to the gantry. It did come with the plates that hold the X and Y extrusions together, so I'll mount those where they need to go now. It only came with three of the four T-nuts needed for this, though, but luckily, I have some from another project. It's also missing both Y-axis belts, but again, luckily I have a few offcuts from previous projects. I also have two long belts if I need to make my own custom length one. 
It just so happens that the two offcuts from building my Ender 3 belted Z mod are almost the exact length for this job. I get those tightened down on both ends and on both sides, and now I can move on to putting the extrusions together. But I notice that one of the set screws for these pieces is missing. I grab just a normal M4 short screw to use in its place, which works just fine. As I was plugging in the Y-axis motor, the wiring fell apart right at the plug. I was going to reuse the wire and just connect a new plug to it, but then I noticed that one of the wires got crunched and severed about halfway up the harness, so I decided to just remake it entirely. This wiring harness is just a single 4-pin JST-XH connector on one end, and a 6-pin JST-2.0 connector on the other end, of which only 4 of the 6 pins are populated. For this, I just used a piece of old 4-strand telephone wire. Now at this point I looked up different pin configurations for NEMA 17 motors and chose the first one I found. I plugged everything in and loaded up Laser Gerbil on my laptop and tested the movement commands. The x-axis seemed to be working fine, but the y-axis would only pulse and vibrate, so I tried the next pin configuration in the list for the y-axis motor. This time, it moved forward and backwards correctly, but when I went to home the machine, it would only home the y-axis and immediately fail on the x-axis. I found that under the heat shrink, the wire from the limit switch was broken, so I soldered that back in place and tested it with laser gerbil by pressing each limit switch and seeing if they showed up. Then I could finally test homing the machine for the first time. Success! Now it's time to clean up all that wiring. I had to use my own wire loom since it didn't come with any of the original wire loom in the box. Now let's just make sure that it's still working. And it looks like we're ready to test out the laser itself. I also just want to remind everyone how important it is to wear your laser safety goggles when working with any kind of laser system. I started this first test with a cutting profile set to 100% laser strength and 500 millimeters per minute with a single pass. This was the result after about 17 minutes. This next test I ran a line-to-line -line picture of my YouTube logo at 100% laser and 1000 millimeters per minute. This test took about 19 minutes to complete. The engraving came out way too deep on this one, so I doubled the speed to 2000 millimeters per minute and chose dithering as my photo method. I'd say this machine is working just fine. It looks much better this time. So is it worth it to buy Amazon returns like this? I think I've come to the same conclusion that I did in my last video. You could get lucky and get a brand new in-box machine for a massive discount, or you could end up with a box of parts that needs fixing and replacing. I got both best and worst outcomes this time but still ended up with two working machines when it was all said and done. If you like to tinker and know how to fix any problems that may come up, I'd say it's very worth it to take the gamble. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.